All right, so you're here because, like me, you're dying for more details about the Blade reboot and why it's been delayed. Again. I mean, come on, what's the deal, Marvel? But before we get into ranting and raving, let's get into the facts, shall we? Disney just pulled Blade from its November 2025 release schedule. And from what I've been reading, it sounds like there's a lot more going on behind the scenes than just your typical production hiccups. We're talking about directors leaving script rewrites galore and even a little playful jab from the original Blade himself, Wesley Snipes. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that this project has been a bit of a roller coaster ride so far. A roller coaster? Yeah. Maybe more like a haunted house, right? Haha, <laughs> maybe you're right. There's definitely a sense of mystery surrounding all these delays. Well, let's try to unravel this mystery then. Let's start with the timeline because it's been pretty confusing for anyone trying to follow along. The movie was first supposed to come out in November 2023 then got pushed to September 2024. That first delay came after Bassam Tariq, the original director, left the project in late 2022. Officially, it was due to scheduling conflicts, but there were, of course, a lot of rumors swirling around about creative differences. Yeah, Hollywood in rumors, name a more iconic duo, right? Yeah. Anyway, then Jan Demange came on board to direct, but he also ended up leaving just this past June. It's got to be a bad sign when two directors leave a project like that, right? Well, it definitely raises some eyebrows. And then to make matters worse, the writer's strike hit and everything came to a standstill. Talk about bad timing, huh? So we've got the strike, the director departures, but there's also the issue of the script itself. I've read a few articles that say they've been having trouble cracking it. Now, for our listeners who aren't familiar with Hollywood lingo, cracking the script basically means finding the right story tone and making sure it all flows together it's kind of like finding the secret ingredient in a recipe exactly and with blade it seems like they've had a lot of chefs in the kitchen so to speak oh yeah how many are we talking well let's see there was michael green stacy osekafor michael starbury Bode Mayo, nick pizzolato and then eric pearson also took a pass at it so that's six different writers six writers wow I mean, it's not uncommon for big movies to have multiple writers, but six seems like a lot. Do you think they were just struggling to find the right tone or maybe having trouble figuring out how to fit Blade into the larger MCU? It's tough to say for sure, but one thing's for certain. Kevin Feige seems determined to get this right, even if it takes a while. He's on record saying that nailing the script is the most important thing and they're not going to rush it. That's going to be frustrating for fans who've been waiting for this movie for so long. But I guess it's better to wait for a good movie than rush out a bad one, right? Absolutely. And you know, this whole thing with Blade being delayed makes you wonder if it has anything to do with Disney CEO Bob Iger's comments about slowing down Marvel's output. Oh yeah, he said something about a maximum of three movies and two shows per year, right? <laughs> Exactly. So it seems like they're trying to be more selective with their projects and really focus on quality over quantity. And that might be why they decided to put Predator, Badlands, in Blade's old November 2025 release slot. I mean, that move kind of speaks volumes, doesn't it? It definitely does. It makes you wonder if they have more faith in Predator than Blade at this point. Which is kind of ironic when you think about it. Predator. Badlands is directed by Dan Trachtenberg, who also directed Prey, which was a huge hit for Hulu, a streaming service. Mm -hmm. And now they're giving Predator. Badlands a theatrical release, which suggests they might see it as a bigger box office draw than Blade. Yeah, it's a curious turn of events for sure. But hey, the Blade trilogy wasn't exactly a flop, was it? True, those films were pretty successful, but they also came out between 1998 and 2004. The world of superhero movies has changed a lot since then. Yeah, you've got a point. Back then, superhero movies were still kind of niche. Now they're like the biggest thing in Hollywood. So maybe Disney's just being extra cautious with Blade. They want to make sure they get it right and deliver something that can compete with all the other superhero blockbusters out there. That makes sense. But what about Mahershala Ali? He's the one who pitched this Blade reboot to Kevin Feige back in 2019. I mean, surely he wouldn't have signed on if he didn't believe in the project, right? And from everything we've heard, he's still fully committed to the role. So the question is, when are we actually going to see this movie? Yeah, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Well... There are those three untitled Marvel movies on the schedule for 2028. Maybe one of those spots is reserved for Blade? It's possible, right. But let's not forget what we're trying to figure out here. Why has Blade been delayed so much? Mm -hmm. And could these delays actually turn out to be a good thing? I know it's frustrating for us fans, but maybe, just maybe, all this extra time will actually make for a better movie. You know what? That's an interesting thought. Sometimes when a project goes through a lot of turmoil like this, 
it forces the creators to get really clear about their vision. Like they have to dig deep and figure out what really matters. Exactly. And remember, they brought in Eric Pearson to take another crack at the script. He's worked on a bunch of MCU projects already, so maybe he's the missing piece of the puzzle. And we can't forget about Mia Goth. She's supposed to be playing Lilith. And from what I've read, she's been pretty vocal about Marvel's commitment to making this a great movie. Yeah, she seems pretty confident that they're on the right track. And then there's Wesley Snipes, the original Blade. Oh, yeah. What about that little jab he made on X Twitter? You mean when he said, Blade, lordy, 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 folks still looking for the secret sauce? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was definitely throwing some shade there, but he's not wrong, right? The original Blade movies were awesome. And they kind of paved the way for all the more mature comic book movies we're seeing today. For sure. They definitely pushed the boundaries. And that kind of makes me wonder what tone they're going for with this new Blade movie. I've heard rumors that Phage is aiming for an R rating. Really? Yeah, which wouldn't make sense considering the source material and those earlier films. Can you imagine a Blade movie in the MCU with that level of grit and intensity? Oh, man. That would be epic. But, you know, this whole thing with Predator taking Blade's release date makes you think about Disney's overall strategy with these franchises. Yeah, for sure. The Predator films have been pretty consistent at the box office. The first one back in 1987 made almost $100 million worldwide. Wow. And when you look at the entire franchise, including those Alien vs. Predator movies, it's brought in over $750 million globally. That's a lot of dough. So from a purely financial standpoint, you can see why Disney might be more confident in Predator Badlands right now, especially after the success of Prey on Hulu. But hey, the Blade trilogy wasn't exactly a box office slouch either. Yeah. It raked in over $418 million worldwide. Yeah, but those movies came out, like we said, almost 20 years ago. The movie landscape, especially for superhero films, is totally different now. You're right. Back then, superhero movies were still trying to find their audience. Now they rule the box office. So maybe that's why it's so important for Marvel to get Blade just right. It has to stand out in a super crowded market. And it has to live up to the legacy of those earlier films. It's a tall order, for sure. But hey, Disney's not afraid to delay projects to make sure they're good. Remember what happened with Black Panther? The original director left the project, they brought in Ryan Coogler, and it ended up becoming a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, that's a great example. And when you look at it that way, maybe these delays aren't such a bad thing after all. Maybe they're actually a sign that they're really taking their time to craft something special. A Blade movie unlike anything we've seen before. Exactly. That's an exciting thought. So where does all of this leave us? What's the future of Blade? Well, I think it's clear that Blade's journey to the big screen is far from over. There are a lot of things at play here. The writer strike is still going on, the MCU landscape is constantly evolving, and Disney seems to be shifting its strategy when it comes to how many Marvel projects they're putting out each year. And then there's the whole creative challenge of bringing Blade to life in a way that's faithful to the comics, but also feels fresh and relevant for today's audience. <laughs> it's a tough balancing act for sure, but you know, I'm still optimistic. I think Mahershala Ali is an incredible actor, and I have faith that Marvel under Kevin Feige's leadership can pull this off. What do you think? Are you feeling as hopeful as I am? I'd say I'm cautiously optimistic. Ali's a fantastic choice for Blade, and Feige has like a pretty solid track record when it comes to the MCU. And you know what? Sometimes these delays, as frustrating as they can be, they actually end up being a good thing in disguise. How so? Well, they give the creative team more time to refine their vision, you know, really dig deep into what makes Blade such a compelling character. Yeah, I see your point. Yeah. So maybe all this behind the scenes drama will actually result in a Blade movie that's really unique and memorable, a film that pushes the boundaries of the superhero genre. That's what I'm hoping for. And I think that's what a lot of fans are hoping for, too. It would be amazing to see a Blade film that captures the spirit of the comics while also bringing something new to the table, yeah. right? Yeah. Something that really surprises us. Absolutely. And that brings us back to you, our listeners. Yeah. We've talked a lot about Blade's troubled production and all the delays and the director changes and the script rewrites, but now we want to hear from you. We want to know what you think. Given everything we've discussed, what kind of Blade film do you think Marvel is ultimately aiming for? Is all this a good sign or a bad sign for Blade and the future of the franchise? Hit us up on social media and let us know your thoughts, your theories, your predictions. We love hearing from you guys. Until next time, deep divers.